more professional development for teachers, and next year we're going to have use state funding for professional development during the school year. The state has given us $225,000 to improve. $50,000 is going back to the state for this service with WestEd to, uh, to do the comprehensive needs assessment and to work with us on implementing the plan, developing the plan and implementing it and working with us over the course of three years. 24-25, we're going to be monitoring the progress of the improvement plan from the year before, and we're going to continue professional development and improving instructional practice. So what will Winchester School do? What will we be doing? We will work with the state and a committee of school people, probably during, um, well, We'll get a group of teachers and specialists and administrators and we'll work on board members and we're going to work on our instructional programs. We need to identify our problem areas and examine and adopt research-based solutions to address these problems. We're also going to facilitate the design of a comprehensive action plan that will guide us through the change and the trainings and monitoring. We will take advantage of the coaching and support that the state is going to offer us. And over the next two years, we will engage in rigorous professional development in UDL, which is under Universal Design for Learning. Uh, instructional strategies that maximize student achievement, grade level and vertical team collaboration, Eureka Math, social and emotional development, classroom differentiation, and MTSS. What will Winchester School do? We are ensuring our school standards and curriculum closely align with the state standards because the state standards are what our students are being um, tested on. Uh, we want to make sure that we're spiraling, spiraling our curriculum to ensure that we teach all the standards in the content areas. So you teach it and then you move on and up the spiral and then you go back and review and teach and review and teach it scaffolding. Uh, we're ensuring that we are using standards-based instructional practices, including an organized system of MTSS to support student learning. Megan has just done an outstanding job of uh, arranging the schedule. I'm sure she'll tell you about that. But we've already put some of these things in place. We'll work with the state and local policy makers to ensure that the student assessments align with the content that our students are expected to learn. And those are things like homework, our report card system, um, with what standards are being taught during which trimester, to make sure we cover them all. We, we circle around, we teach it, we circle around, we do remediation, but we move on, and then we circle around and move on. Um, that's with the MTSS, and Megan will speak about that. We're providing our students with the tools to understand exactly what is being asked on these SAS, State Assessment System questions, and we'll give them the strategies they need to effectively answer the questions. We. Um, I think Megan and the teachers met and they discovered that the students really, it was like going out to play football without knowing the rules of the game. They just, so they spent a lot of time this spring, this season, practicing and understanding what the questions are, how they relate to what they know and what they're learning and how they're going to answer them, how you take them apart, how you analyze what's really being asked. Uh, and we're gonna, we, we will continue to administer, administer a district level assessment in math and literacy to monitor student growth. So we have a, a district level assessment, it's done three times a year. The teacher will be using that, those, uh, that information to monitor the growth from fall to winter to spring. And every six weeks, we're going to change up the MTSS groups. We're going to be working on skills. 
uh, that are related to what is being taught in that grade level that they have developed over the summer. They're putting together a whole year of what standards are being taught when, and then they're going to have uh, MTSS. For those, it's a six-week um, program. The students either they need more or they can <clears throat> test out of it. Uh, these are remediating uh, remediation uh, skills that they'll be taught if they didn't get it the first time in the classroom. Also, we're expecting MTSS to hopefully add uh, extension for students who didn't get it that uh, they could uh, further their knowledge. So that's where we are right now. We're waiting for uh, the state to finalize. It's, it's very inconvenient. The state has told us right from the beginning they would have a, this company working with us, this service to help us, and they haven't finalized their contract with the service, although they took our 50,000. And um, they're telling me now that they should be around uh, by the end of May. And I said, well, the teachers leave June 12th. So we're going to continue with our meetings and uh, make sure that we're attacking uh, this seriously. Because, again, this is public knowledge. We need to really show that we have a plan. We have put a lot of pieces in, in place this year and next year. Uh, for next year, and I believe that, I'm hoping that the, the whole school is 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 uh, in agreement that we, we can fix this, we can do this, we can uh, do it better. We can um, make up for that, and we will overcome this. I know that uh, it's hard to hear, it's just hard to hear. But uh, I also want to talk about, oh, oh, please, ask questions. I didn't hear the slide you were talking about um, including new curriculum. Do you, what areas are you looking for new curriculum? Um, what we're doing is, I was working uh, with, a, with one of our teachers, our second grade teacher. Um, in the previous administration, they, um, Things weren't always, it, we, needed, we need to update what we're, how we're teaching children um, literacy and phonics. And there's the age old thing between, um, you know, guided reading and phonics. And it's very hard to help people understand that we're putting together part of teaching students to read. It's a big picture. So you do have phonics, and you do have guided reading, and you do have um, different strategies. Decodable readers are okay, but you need rich literature because it's language-based, and, and kids understand language. They're brought up to, they, they need something that makes sense when they read it. So one of the things I, I had asked um, one of our second grade teachers uh, that I respect highly, uh, Jen, uh, Joan Franklin, and uh, I asked her to look at foundations. I, I, my doctorate's in curriculum, so I asked her to look at that because I've worked with that 15 years. It's Wilson-based, and Wilson is great for language, great for uh, reading uh, problems, uh, reading disabilities. You can get more intense into it, but this is a preventative, and it's K-1, 2, and 3. And it's incredibly easy and really fun for the kids. And I, I'm, I would like them to really uh, investigate it, which I know Joan is doing. And uh, I'm hoping that we can use some of our funding to get foundations in, to get a, you know, Orton Gillingham's great, but it's also specially designed instruction, which is pretty much for special ed kids. Um, I don't know why all the teachers were trained in it using ESSER funds in 20, 20, 2020, but I'd, I'd like to see that. I'd also like to see a little bit more of a balanced literacy. What we're um, looking at is there's a big, it, it's out there, it's been since I started. We used to call it whole language and then we called it, um, you know, 
decoding, decodable, and but it is, it, it's, um, we need to do balanced literacy, and that's not a bad thing. We're, we need to do a lot of phonics, a lot of reading, reading for meaning, uh, running records, which will help us. So we need to um, get everybody on board, maybe. Um, I think the teachers are doing a lot of this already, but I think if we have more training in it, it will help us to um, get better results. And one thing we're finding out too is with all this training in how to take a test or take, you know, to understand what they're asking, to be critical uh, problem solvers, to be able to look at a question and actually take it apart, dismantle it, and then reconstruct it in understanding what they need. Our uh, district level data should improve as well. Our district level data from our STAR diagnostics should improve as well. And that is what we're going to use to keep kind of a thumb, kind of a, a to monitor the students and their growth. And we're going to be more, this is the second year uh, brought in STAR when I came because we didn't have a district level assessment. Um, so we've done it two years and the teachers are really working with it well. And I think next year, uh, with Megan's plan for MTSS, which is multi-tiered systems of support, uh, in other words, it's a, um, a meaningful and intentional uh, intervention that they would go, that we have certain interventionists that would go into the classrooms at different times on an everyday basis to work with these kids on the skills that they're lacking and the diagnostic that we're doing will help us to do that, will help us to know who's doing it, who's getting it, who needs more, uh, more of what because there's math and there's literacy. So when we look at curriculum, I would, um, I would like to start with the phonics. I would also like to see what the teachers feel is you know, is what they're using providing the rigor we need? Are they doing guided reading groups in the truest sense? Are they getting the information? Are, do they need running record training, how to do that? That's an instant uh, one minute assessment, but it tells you so much because it tells you where the student is making, uh, if they're making errors in their reading, it tells you what they're doing, uh, which error are they taking, and, and you can see a pattern and then you know the skill that they need to work on. And uh, so, yeah, there's, there's, but it's hard because the uh, information out there, uh, the, uh, you know, out in these upper echelons, they discuss and they say, well, you know, guided reading isn't this, and, and but they need to have phonetics and, well, they always have phonetics. Um, I'd like to do foundations. I'd like to change what we're doing because I think it suits most children. But yeah, we just have some work to do. And we have to, it, it's hard because we didn't ask for this, but this happened. This happened not this year, not, not really last year, but it, it had been coming for four years. And so, I came and, and now it's time to fix what some of the habits that we had gotten into. So, um, I'm oh, sure, I, I, I'm, I'm all over the map here. I'm just kind of. It has to do with your question you said. You talked about new curriculum reading for K through three. What about the older kids? Um, we have looked at that. Um, when we talk curriculum, what we're talking about, particularly with the older kids, are strategies. It's not the program you use, but the practices you use. And what we need to do is to really analyze what the skills, what the standards are that we're teaching. Are we meeting all those standards? Uh, why are our students having a hard time on the SAS if they've had those standards? And I believe some of those standards 
for whatever reason, probably, you know, that we're not, either we're not able to get to them because we spend a lot of time on what the students are struggling with. So if we have a concerted effort with um, our interventionists for multi-tiered systems of support, uh, we hope to get to more standards. So it's not really about the program. It's about the practices. It's about the instructional strategies. And we have a lot of PD next year on instructional strategies uh, for social emotional learning in the classroom. Um, how are, you know, why are some kids shutting down? How can we help the behavior? What kind of lesson plans are we making? Are the students not engaged so they're acting out? We're not able to keep them engaged in meaningful activities. Um, the days of having kids come and do seat work, that's, it doesn't work anymore. The, the kids don't do, you know, in the olden days when I started it, we had a mimeograph machine. They had all this while the teacher was doing a round robin reading group. <coughs> you don't do that. You don't make a student sit there and listen to another child read and struggle through a paragraph because you're going to lose this student. You're going to upset this student who's reading. Um, so yeah, there's just it's strategies, instructional strategies. And, and this is no real reflection on our teachers. Our teachers are doing a great job, but I do think that um, putting a name on different strategies and really kind of looking for those strategies and working as a group of teachers, these are what we're looking at. Uh, Megan and Robin, the principal and the assistant principal, are going to take a, um, they're going to uh, take a course this summer, a 40-hour course in um, actually supervision and evaluation based on these skills and strategies that work.